Welcome to SharePoint Pittsburgh. My name is Caroline and I'll be introducing you to Lesson 4, Introduction to Web Parts. First we'll be answering the question, what are web parts? Then we'll be adding and using web parts. So what are web parts? Web parts are highly customizable windows that show information within a SharePoint site. Web parts are located within web part zones. There are many different built-in web part categories and types. Web parts can display data from sources such as lists, search results, forms, and other web pages. In adding and using web parts, we'll be adding multiple web parts to web part zones, adding an existing list to a web part zone, and changing and editing views on multiple web parts. I'm going to hand this over to Leo, who will be teaching you Lesson 4. Thank you, Caroline, and welcome back, everyone, to SharePoint Pittsburgh. So let's go ahead and open our browser, and then we'll go ahead and log into our SharePoint site by typing in SP2010, and then we'll go to the store subsite. So now, as Caroline mentioned, the first question that we need to answer is, what is a web part? Well, in my opinion, web parts are pretty awesome. What they let you do is grab data from, from multiple areas and pull that data in to, to one screen so you essentially have all the data you want to see right at your fingertips. The best way to uh, actually see this is by example, so that's what we're going to do now. So let's go ahead and edit the page. We'll hit click page, edit page, and now we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, you know what we're actually seeing here. You'll see two uh, boxes here and the things that I'm highlighting now are actually called web part zones. Web part zones are where web parts are placed into and you can have multiple web parts in a web part zone and web part zones are essentially on uh, a web part enabled page or, or template. So now that we got all the boring details out of the way let's go ahead and actually add our first web part. So we'll go ahead and click add a web part and you'll notice um, web parts aren't they don't have to just be a list uh, we have our recipes document library there's there's all kinds of crazy stuff that uh, that you can add to a web part you can even create custom web parts but for now uh, again we're just trying to cover the basics and we're going to cover all the cool cooler or cool advanced stuff in the uh, in the later lessons so let's add our document library uh, recipes and now we just created a web part uh, with the document library. Now what's really cool about web parts is that you actually don't lose your, your functionality. Uh, if you recall last uh, lesson where we talked about document libraries where you could check in and check out, we can also do that by clicking on the text, uh, context menu, checking our version history, and, and, and again, uh, checking in, check out, checking in documents. So, that's, that's the really neat thing about web parts is the fact you get all this data, but it's not just viewable data. You can actually manipulate that data right there without having to click you know, through all kinds of uh, you know, different pages to access what you want to access. So they're, they're a tremendously nice feature. So now let's go ahead and add uh, two more web parts. Um, as I promised before, where it will add a list if you saw the, the PowerPoint. So in this time, cl uh, click on the web part zone, click insert, uh, add an existing list to a web part zone, and we'll add our flavors um, list. Click add there, and one more, we'll just add the, the shortcut way. Click on web part, and click store locations, and click add. So now that we've added all of our web parts, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, change and create a, a view. So let's go ahead and click on the flavors web part. Okay. We'll go ahead and click list and modify view. So now what we're going to do is actually click created by and then click OK. And what you'll notice now is that we actually have the created by column. Now the, the neat thing is, is if we go ahead and click flavors over here, you'll notice the, the column hasn't changed. So that uh, that view that we edited is only actually 
uh, the, the view is only pertains to the web part. So we didn't actually change our, our default view on the list as you saw a moment ago. So I really don't want to have this in list form. I really want to have the, the calendar view. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click uh, edit web part. We'll change the selected view from current view to the calendar and we'll click OK, hit apply, click OK, and then you'll see that now our seasonal uh, ice cream uh, specials from Happy Scoops are displayed in the calendar. So that's pretty neat stuff. So now what I'm going to do is rearrange uh, this right uh, web part zone uh, by going to page, clicking edit page, and then I'm just going to simply take this and drag and drop it above the calendar. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and stop editing. And now I've actually just rearranged my page that easily. That's a pretty awesome feature. So now what we're going to do is actually just simply uh, show you that you can click on the uh, column headings and organize the list. So again, these are fully featured uh, components, which I think is the, the, the best thing about, uh, about the web parts. Again, I mean, I've used a lot of different uh, software systems before that can only display the data. This, this uh, or these web parts actually let you manipulate the data. Well, that's everything for our uh, first episode on web parts. I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed it. And stay tuned because we're going to be uh, producing a lot more SharePoint, uh, SharePoint lessons on, on multiple topics and, and definitely more on web parts in the future.